Hello, friends and frenemies. How are we doing today? You guys have all had a very, very stressful morning, and I apologize for that. It must be rough. So, this is what we're going to do. This is hysterical, and what I've noticed, and I was, like, sitting here going, when are all of, like, the hardcore cult of Steve people going to come out and come for me. You know, this is quite weird. I've had a lot of people leave me great comments. I've had some people leave me negative comments. Um, but the comments didn't actually take any kind of stance or argument on the things that I said in my video. So I just took that as, oh, these people are just upset and wanting to vent about whatever. But the thing that keeps popping up is my language. So this video, I'm going to try really hard to keep this PG. Nay, I'm going to try to keep this G rated because I know how sensitive Steve's viewers and Michael's viewers are. They don't like bad language. Okay, they, they don't like language that's nasty at all, even though I will say the majority of the books that Michael reads are littered with so much racist fuck oops, racist language, but he likes those books and loves those books. But I drop some bombs and, you know, can't win an argument if you're using bad language. So um, and some might say, but you like all those books that Michael likes, too. And I don't have a problem with language, okay? I'm not condoning language, but I'm also not throwing the baby out with the bathwater here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I am going to, like there was a part of me that wanted to like show the comments and like talk about the comments. Because another thing that I've noticed people talking about is it's bad to make a video talking about something when you have takes that not everyone agrees with. But it's not bad to do that in the comments. And we were all doing response videos back and forth, okay? So, where's the response video? If Steve doesn't agree with the things I said about him, why hasn't Steve made a video talking about that? Here's another thing that a lot of people don't know, even though I said it in the comments. So obviously people don't read all the comments. I made this video. Didn't want to put it out because I, I felt like I was too like passionate and uh, about it. Okay. So I held it off. I waited a few days. I talked to Steve about it. I talked to Steve on Voxer and went down the list of my arguments with him. And he could not respond to any of them. He could not come up with any argument as to why he thinks the way he does. There are two reasons why that is, and we will get to that later. So stay tuned, folks. The other thing that makes all of this so strange is that what a lot of people don't understand is that... Steve's actions, the things Steve says, even though a lot of you say Steve doesn't have that kind of power, you know, blah, 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 blah. I find it strange that whenever somebody says something like that, they're also using all the same words that they heard from the last video. Because um, the video Michael did saying the things that he said, there's one commenter who keeps coming back just saying the same thing over and over in everyone else's comments. And I think it's a bot. Maybe it's a Russian bot. Is that still a thing? Speaking of, dude, I think it's so funny how many Trumpers and right-wing people watch Steve's channel. That blows my mind, okay? Like, you guys realize that, like, Steve is not a fan of Trump and not a fan of those things. Like, do you guys just, like, put your fingers in your ear and go, la, 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 la. Because you like watching Steve because it makes you feel like an intellectual. And I know that that's really hard for you to ever feel like since you watch Fox News and Newsmax and OAN, but... Okay, back to everything else that's important here. Steve knew everything I was going to say in that video. He knew about it before the video came out. Um, we talked, and then um, at one point, he just stopped responding to me. 
And I know that he was in the middle of talking to a bunch of different people during this whole thing. Because while he was leaving me messages, his boxer boop, boop, like kept going off like damn like firecrackers. Oh yeah, I'm not cussing in this video for the sensitive ears. And another thing I have to do here is that I have to be very, very smiley. Because when when Steve like talks shit, oh, when Steve says bad things about people, he smiles and goes, <laughs> and it's okay. Like he when he does his Krusty the Clown laugh. So, and I, and I don't have a dog anymore, so I can't, like, kiss a dog every time I say something horrible and mean. So, this is hysterical. Okay. Oh, but the reason why I'm doing this video is I had a bunch of people in the comments tell me that I did my video wrong. That um, I, I lose an argument as soon as I start cussing. That the vitriol I used is not okay. And all this other stuff. Like, how, how was it said? If I stayed more calm maybe someone would be able to hear my arguments. Okay, I think that was the actual word. So I'm going to stay calm as crap. Should have smoked some pot, but whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my video, see if I could make these same arguments in a nice, pleasant way for all of the people with sensitive ears. Okay. Hello, everybody. And welcome to this somber ass video. The banter me and him have had over the years. We haven't really talked much lately. I, w I want to say something about this because this came up because obviously I can't like Steve if I um, say bad things about him in a video. Um, that's ridiculous. Um, anyone who is in a family of more than two people knows that you love people that you argue with all the time. Like, if you have a big family, if you have siblings, you can disagree with your siblings. You can say hurtful things to your siblings sometimes, okay? And you still love your siblings. I appreciate Steve on a whole other level, okay? I've had good talks with him. Steve has also made me horribly angry numerous times over different things, some of which have nothing to do with BookTube, okay? But Steve, at the heart of Steve, is a good dude. And I've always liked Steve. It's funny, too, because over the years, I've gone to bat for Steve. I've made response videos to people who've attacked Steve. And in those response videos, I use the same language. And a lot of the people who've been coming and saying to me that my language is inexcusable are the same people who thanked me for saying what I said. Um, the way I said it, even. So it's just, it's, it's funny that now that like I cussed in Steve's general direction, like his viewers are completely losing their fucking mind. So let's, let's continue this. The stuff that I've heard on other people's videos are exact mimics of things that Steve has said. And, this and that is true. Steve Donahue, if you're watching this, you are an authority and you have tried and have made yourself that authority on BookTube. Okay, back to... I agree with that. No matter what anyone says, Steve is an authority on BookTube. I don't know how anyone could, like, argue that he's not. Um, he has made it abundantly clear over the years that um, the way he booktubes is the way to booktube. And he tells you how not to booktube all the time. Um, a lot of the people in the comments who have said anything about him talk about his vast knowledge Okay, as soon as you are saying that you appreciate someone's vast knowledge on a topic, that person is then an authority. You have made that person an authority. This isn't rocket science. Okay, okay, and let's just get to this part real quick first. Um, I, I've said a couple times now in this, I think already, and in the other video, I alluded to it. The reason why Steve Donahue probably doesn't monetize has nothing to do with any of his values of BookTube. What it has to do with is the fact that when Steve started on BookTube and the fake reader girls fiasco happened, and it's funny because someone even pointed out that like this is the same witch hunt that happened then. And honestly, um, if you don't want people to know you're a Trumper, don't use the word witch hunt because um, the only people using the word witch hunt right now are like 
the right. So like Fox News, Trump, witch hunt, you know, come on. So don't use words that you hear on Fox News, guys. Um, unless you want people to know you're a Trumper. If you do, then that's fine. But if you're like trying to be a secret Trumper and all that stuff, d don't use witch hunt. It's not, it, it, it's not nice. Okay. So the whole fake reader girls thing, Steve got, and Pete, and the only reason why I'm going to talk about this is because it's still like the videos are still up there. You just have to dig. Um, Steve got in trouble because he said, um, that all of these people doing videos, again, this was an argument against monetization, is because they're getting paid or getting free books to um, review on their channels. And he doesn't like the fact that they, like, spent all this, like, time and energy editing their video and... Um, the lighting's really good and everything looks very polished and all this stuff. And he said that he doesn't even know how they have time to read when they're busy, like doing their hair and their makeup. And that's how the whole fake reader girl thing happened. But his argument was getting paid to do reviews is disingenuous because how could anyone possibly believe that you're going to give a honest review if you're getting paid for it and um the obvious hypocritical stance right there is well steve you're a professional reviewer and steve's argument was was that you know he he's in traditional media like people like pay for his opinion you know they're not paying for advertising and so however that works in his head that YouTube isn't real and YouTube doesn't um, exist as a real medium, whatever. So since day one, Steve's argument about monetization has been not to do it. And when he started this whole thing with the whole fake reader girl thing, I don't think his channel was eligible for monetization. So it was a decent argument for him to make because there was, at that time, no way for him to be able to get monetized. The fake reader girl thing happened and suddenly he had thousands of thousands more subscribers and like he like blew up and he was really worried about um, the backlash, which he had every right to be. And um, he had uh, like some of the people... Um, some of the fake reader girls people like um they were like trying to contact or they did contact um places that hired him and tried to get him fired that i do not agree with okay do not go after somebody's livelihood that is wrong that is bad you do not go after the way somebody makes money how somebody survives, how somebody puts food in their mouth. You know, you do not go after that, which is why it's so strange that Steve is so against monetization and telling people that they are wrong if they monetize their channel because he, and when he says that and says that these people are working out of mindless greed, it's telling his viewers not to watch these channels because these people are disingenuous. Do you, see, do you see what I'm saying? Do you see how this works? So Steve is, by telling his viewers this, his viewers will start to unsubscribe from the channels that Steve has told them are only in this for mindless greed, okay? Now, that's where I was like, this is very, like, ironic, since someone threw irony in my face in my comments, it's ironic for someone who almost got canceled to be doing the same behavior and acting like they're not doing that. Okay, so that's what I said. Yeah, let's let's just keep going here. Let's just keep going here. Okay, let me let me hit that real quick. So this is another thing. Steve says it's degrading to get seven cents a day for your videos. Now, him saying that is also strange because he's implying that people's channels will never grow, okay? Channel growth is something that takes a long time. It's something that happens over time. 
you can't just snap your fingers and then your channel um, has 13,000 subs, 14,000 subs. It doesn't work like that. You have to put hard work into it. That's just how it is. So if you actually work at doing your videos and you work at growing your channel, which Steve says is bad, like you shouldn't like look at your stats and your analytics, that that's bad for some reason. It's bad because Steve doesn't do it, allegedly. That's it. That's the only reason why it's bad, okay? Another thing here is, just talking about the money bit, that is a good question. How much is enough to degrade yourself for, okay? Now, there's this joke, and I know I'm dealing with sensitive people right now who don't like hearing bad words, so I'm going to try to tell this joke as... Um, easily as I can. How do I even tell this joke without offending all of these sensitive people who are watching? So this guy walks up to a woman. You know what? Let's even change it up to where women won't get offended. Cause like, I don't, I don't need to offend women for no reason here. So this dude walks up to another dude and he says, Hey, would you go to bed with me for a hundred bucks? And the guy's like, no. And he's like, okay, how about five bucks? And the guy's like, what? What do you think I am? And he's like, well, you know what I think you are. Now we're just haggling over price. You guys see how this goes here? So we know what Steve is. He's a freelance writer, okay? So d don't think I was going somewhere hard and dirty there. Steve's a freelance writer. Um, and he writes his opinions, okay? So... What is the correct amount of money to degrade yourself for since giving your opinions on books is degradation? What is the correct amount of money? This is a question that I asked Steve and he would not answer. Okay. He would not answer it. So now I'm giving you another opportunity and I'm giving all of your viewers another opportunity. I'm giving Michael K. Vaughn an opportunity. I'm giving all of his viewers an opportunity. What is the correct amount to degradate yourself for? That's it. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, and let's just get into this too. The Patreon thing. That's legit. I don't understand why anyone's upset about that. Oh wait, no one is upset about it because I have like 700 comments on my video and not a single person has even brought that up because you, there's no argument against it. Steve is making money off of Patreon that's based off of his YouTube channel that he thinks it's mindless greed to monetize, but he's making all this money off of Patreon, okay? And then he says, well, the people who put money on there are stupid. I think they're idiots. So Steve's telling you exactly what he thinks of you, and you still give him money, and, and that's fine, and that's okay, whatever. Um, like, there are tons of people who are in abusive relationships, and they don't see that it's abusive, so that's okay, whatever. Next, Steve doesn't like um, the super chat function. Steve doesn't like the fact that you could just send somebody money. That's just stupid, okay? That's just silly. And anyone who sets that up, it's mindless greed. But hey, if you want to send the brattle, like a gift card for me, so I could go buy some more books, that's cool. That's fine. Everything's good. So this is where the hypocrisy of everything comes into play. And if you don't like the way I spoke of the hypocrisy in my last video, hopefully now, me being very calm and me not using any profanities, you guys will be able to understand that this is very hypocritical behavior, okay? And um, if you don't understand that, I don't know what to say to you. If you can, in the comments of this video, if you can tell me how that's not hypocritical, I would love to hear it because I'm totally 100% serious and this is a difference between me and Steve. If you could prove to me that I'm wrong about something, I will totally apologize. I'm down. I don't know everything. I don't pretend to be this wealth of knowledge. I don't pretend. I've read every book on the planet. I know every language. I could talk to every dog that's ever existed. And I've been on every continent except Australia because that is a dangerous place. I don't say any of this stuff. 
okay? If I'm wrong about something, tell me that I'm wrong and show me how I'm wrong. Don't just say, horrible video, troop, troop, horrible video, I'm a Russian bot, horrible video. It, it, okay, horrible video, good job. Like, to each his own. Not every video is for everybody. Not every booktuber is for everybody, for crying out loud. Obviously, because I use bad language, and not a lot of people like it. So what's next? Let's see. Only niche on the YouTube community. Oh. Jesus Christ, no, don't. What the f Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. The elitist nature of BookTube. This is legit. This is a true thing. People on BookTube feel that they are superior to other viewers of other types of YouTube because they feel like they do not deserve to watch ads. Like, how dare you make me watch an ad? I actually saw a comment on um, one of Steve's on Steve's video, like down the comments, because when I talked to Steve, he said it was ridiculous for me to think that he didn't want people to leave comments if the views were different. That's coming up and we'll talk about it. So I'm like, okay, I'll take your point there. And so I went down Steve's video and left comments that he did not respond to any of them. So that's that. But this one guy said, I totally agree. The second anyone monetizes their channel, I unsub. It is stupid and ridiculous for people to think that I'm going to sit through an ad just to hear them talk about a book. Okay. Like, there's a part of me that goes, oh my gosh, they're letting 80-year-olds watch YouTube at the old folks' home. Like, what planet... Do you live on where you assume that you're so special that you can use platforms run by giant corporations and not get ads? You're going to get ads anyway, okay? Whether or not a channel monetizes or not, you're going to get those ads. So, whatever. Okay, um... Was that my last point on that? Let's see. This might jog my memory. What are you complaining about? Oh, and then this was the other thing too. Um, like Steve is perfectly fine with there being ads in every magazine that he has reviews in. Perfectly fine, because all you have to do is flip the page. He's perfectly fine with ads on the websites that he has his content in, okay? And that's fine. He's totally okay with that. So with that logic, it's okay then, I guess, for Steve, if you monetize your channel and make it to where ads aren't playing, but the pop-ups at the bottom and on the side, or I guess it would be this side for you guys, those are okay, and that's okay to monetize your channel like that. But the idea of Steve having to sit through an actual ad infuriates him. And he obviously has not heard of YouTube Premium. He's obviously not heard of, like, DuckDuckGo um, or any other kind of ad blocker. Like, there are millions of ways to not have to sit through ads. And um, I think the worst way to do that is to shame people into thinking that doing that on their channel is just mindless greed. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that at that. Okay, so let's see what else. Why is it... See, this is a good point. This is a good point I make. Someone in my comments when I told them that I was going to do this video since they, like, inspired me to do it. Um, I think it was Gerald Donahue. Probably not the right name. But I told him I'd give him a shout out, so thank you. Um, he's like, oh yeah, you know, so you could do it so you could give yourself a big round of applause and a pat on the back. Gerald. Um... We're all, okay, we're all losers here. There, there are no winners here, okay? This is, this is BookTube, okay? This, this isn't, like, n no one's getting trophies here for being awesome, okay? So let's just, let's just calm the hell down. But this whole thing about if monetization really bothers you, start your own platform where you don't have to have, um, 
ads and see how long it lasts. And it won't last very long because if you can't pay to keep it running, it's going to die. The funny thing here is not a single person, 290 comments is what I have on that video. I said 700 earlier, sorry. 290 comments, not a single person said a thing about that. Not a single person. That's shocking. That tells me that what I'm saying in the video, the actual arguments are not the issue. The arguments are that I spoke loudly. So that's why we're, we're G rating this thing right now. Okay. We're, we're snow white and the seven dwarves right here. Okay. So hopefully, um, we can actually have some discourse that doesn't start with profanity is bad okay okay that's another thing the whole idea about people wanting to be like steve and a lot of you who are just viewers and i'm not trying to say because someone got mad at me today for making the comment that if you are not a content creator like a lot of this you're probably gonna miss it's gonna fall flat on you and that's not saying that like a viewer cannot watch this video, but a viewer has to understand that there's a whole other side of booktube, okay, that revolves around people creating content. And I have been in groups on Voxer and Buddy Reads and the whole thing where people talk about, man, like I saw, like when I first got into booktube, I was watching Steve Donahue. And I was like, man, I want to be able to do that so bad, but I mean, Honestly, he reads like a thousand pages a day um, or more. And like he just sits there and turns his camera on and just talks for a half hour about each thing. And like I would love to do that, but I can't because like I have to work. I have to support my family. I have to do all these things. And that was the point there was just that, again, like Steve is an authority on BookTube People look up to Steve. People want Steve's approval. And even in the comments from viewers, a lot of you viewers want Steve's approval. Like you will say something in the comments and don't tell me at all because this is total garbage if you're going to lie about this right now. The first time Steve Donahue commented on one of your comments on his video and agreed with something you said were you not just over the moon? Did you tell your, like, your spouse on the couch, oh my gosh, the Steve just agreed with me. Like, it's exciting, okay? I get it. But don't act like it's not real. Don't act like it doesn't happen for freaking crying out loud. Ugh. Yeah, and that's true. Steve's never gonna tell any place he works for or whatever that greed is bad and that they need to stop and a lot of this is because steve comes from that old school where traditional media is like on a higher level than new forms of media and if that were the case if if, if traditional media is so much higher than new media why is traditional media trying so freaking hard to make an imprint in the new media. Like if if new media was garbage and didn't matter, why are they bending over backwards trying to be relevant in new media? It doesn't make any sense. Come on. Stuff in your magazine, but nobody makes Yeah, I shill, guys. Here. You go over to my Etsy shop and buy Type Drunk, Poetry on Writing, Volume Four by me. Go do that. I, I shilled. And that's fine. I don't care. Like, it's okay to shill, guys. Sell your crap. Is crap a bad word? My grandma went to church every Sunday and then went to women's club stuff. And she said crap all the time. So I'm going to assume that crap is an okay word to say. Feel dirty because people like Steve's special because it's a place for conversations. Okay? Now, to me... Ah. Uh, a place for conversations. Th this one's good because when um, this whole thing happened... And um, Steve was trying to say that, like, YouTube's a place for conversations. It's not a place for videos. It's a place for conversations. Has YouTube ever um, marketed itself as YouTube, a place for conversations? No, that's never happened. And it's called YouTube to rhyme with boob tube. 
okay, tube, like a TV. In fact, the original YouTube logo, like the tube part, resembled more of a TV and a tube TV. That's what that is for you young enough who don't know what that means. And a lot of the people who are giving me gripes over this, you guys should know what a tube TV is because those were the first TVs that came out when you were old enough to know what a TV was. Um, the platform was never called you talk or you conversate or anything like that. It is a um, platform for making videos, and then there's comments. Now, it doesn't say conversations. It says comments, where people comment on the video. Now, in Steve's comments, where people were kind of giving him grief on stuff, he was saying, when I post a conversation, like he was trying to re-educate the people who follow him that... The, the things he makes are not videos. The, the things he makes are conversations. And then my argument is, is that conversations are a two-way thing. People who have conversations by themselves, they, they're they the ones down here on the corner that are yelling at things and talking to themselves, by themselves, okay? Um, so I know that Steve's conversations start in the comments but Steve does not like people who disagree with him in the comments and I think this has to do with Steve's age and I'm in the same boat because you have to understand that people who were old enough to have arguments and have conversations with people before text messages and emails and all this other stuff it's hard to be able to tell tone. And some of you might go, well, you guys wrote letters, duh. I'm like, yeah, but letters were like giant, like page after page after page that people put a lot of thought into. And people could explain themselves more. In comments and in texts and in tweets and in emails, we have been trained to just get to the point so quick that a lot of times tone is, is gone. Like you can't tell. And that's why some of you in the comments of my video, I said, hey, if you want to have a conversation about this on Voxer, like, I, I would love to talk to you about it. Because honestly, I think people, because I do get angry in my videos a lot and I rant and I cuss and the whole thing, that when I leave a comment, people assume that I'm talking in that same angry tone or same loud, rah, so, like, I want to be able to talk to people on Voxer where you can actually hear how I'm speaking so you know if I'm being mad, if I'm condescending, if I'm being sarcastic, whatever. So, um, it's really difficult for people who, um, because I feel like, like my kid's age people, they never have known a world where texting wasn't a thing and comments weren't a thing. So I feel like they have a better grasp. I don't think it's a good grasp, but I think they have a better grasp at tone. Okay. And that's probably why so many people, uh, my kid's age, when you talk to them, they have like no emotion. They're just like, bah, 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 bah. Because they're like, I have to talk with no emotion all the time or else people are going to think I'm mad because I mainly only talk to people through comments. So anyway, so um, let's see. Oh yeah, so the thing is, is that a lot of times people in Steve's comments disagree with him. And if they disagree with him in a way that he doesn't like, you are considered a troll and he won't talk to you, okay? But like Steve's like, no, I love conversation and discussion, okay? And so this is when like we go on Voxer and you go talk to Steve on Voxer about something. And when I said like, maybe I'm wrong, someone point out a time where this has happened. No one has. Um, the video has been up for a week. It's got tons of views and people have been commenting, but no one can tell me one time where Steve changed his mind about anything. Okay. So if that is a personal attack on Steve, then I guess my video was full of personal attacks, but um, let me know when I say something that isn't true, because if 
it's a personal attack, but it's a completely true statement. What's the point? What's the problem here? Like, show me that I'm wrong about anything I said, and I will apologize. I will do whatever I need to do to let you know that I was horribly fucking, horribly wrong. Conversation is an exchange of ideas, oh, okay? Exchange of For ideas. Part, I still feel that way. Um, Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson do not like being corrected. I don't think Steve likes to be corrected. All that was to do was to point out three people that I am aware of that don't like being corrected. Was there a bit of neener, neener, neener for comparing Steve to Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson? Yeah, because even though Steve has a different ideology than both Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson, Steve uses some of the same manipulation that they use with their viewers that Steve uses with his viewers. I'm not trying to be a jerk about that. It's just, it's true. And so if it's not true, show me how it's not true. And then I won't say that thing. And I will apologize for being horribly wrong about it. Because like a lot of people think I really care about like being right. I, I don't, care okay if i'm wrong tell me i'm wrong i've been wrong about 90 percent of my life okay i am the guy that learns from his mistakes and the only way i do anything that i do is that i fail at things constantly until i figure out how to do it so um like this is like completely par for the course for me so if i'm wrong about something Tell me I'm wrong and show me how I'm wrong. Don't just go, be bad language. Like, what's that? Like, that that doesn't do anything, guys. But he loves conversation. He doesn't like it when you say good video. because. Of the oh, yeah, that's another thing, too. Um, when I talked to Steve, he, like, I brought this up a little bit ago. He said that obviously he was joking there when he said he doesn't want to be taught anything. And if you disagree with him, that you're just a troll or, or whatever. He said that he didn't mean that, like, totally honestly, and I know that. And I didn't know that, or else I wouldn't have said it. But according to Steve, he doesn't really mean that. So now, you guys can go on Steve's videos and say whatever you want to say, and it's fine. Um, and I, apparently, according to him saying that, then he will engage with you. And so that's fine, that's fine. It's not an open-ended conversation. That doesn't let Steve continue to run his mouth. So you need to have an open-ended question so he can continue. I will say this. I probably shouldn't have said that like that. I, I will I will concede in that regard. I should not have said on the video where I said, Steve doesn't like it when you just say good video because that doesn't give him an opportunity to run his mouth. That probably should have come out better. So I agree with you guys there. I don't know what you would call that, but I, I agree with you. I shouldn't have said that. And 100% honest, honest to goodness, I shouldn't have said that. I think what I said there is very accurate, but I don't think I should have said it that way. So that doesn't let Steve run his mouth. I should have said, that's not engaging to have a conversation in the comments. So that's what I should have said. So apologies for that one. And that's another thing too. I, I stand by that. Like you either are going to say that getting money from YouTube and your YouTube videos is mindless greed or it's not mindless greed. You can't say it's mindless greed and then get people giving you money for the brattle, get Patreon money and the whole deal. Like it's either greed or it's not, or it's Steve saying that he is a character of mindless greed, but he just doesn't want to monetize his videos because of the whole fake reader girl fiasco. Because then it, he would look like a hypocrite, even though this also makes him look like a hypocrite. So I don't know. But then he also shills. I honestly think that too. Like for all the people who've been in my comments giving me gripes and all this stuff, and even that guy in Steve's comment that said, I completely unsub immediately. I think if Steve monetized his channel, his viewers would be fine. They'd be like, okay, I have ad blocker anyway. Whatever. And I also think people who watch Steve's videos, it's become like an addiction. Like, you know, you get five rants a day from Steve. And a lot of people who watch BookTube, 
really only watch Steve's videos. They might watch like one or two other channels throughout the week if Steve mentioned something about it. But for the most part, I feel like people like just watch Steve. So this last week where Steve's been um, like laying low, um, they probably been really like, oh, what do I do? And it's funny that they, he did that this week because there's been a ton of stuff on the news to keep them busy since last week. Um, so that's a whole other thing. But maybe we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. This stuff you do, as much as it doesn't sound like it right now, but the take you have on this is not a hot take. And you are... I agree with that. I, I still fuck... Oh. I still love Steve. I do. I know you guys don't think that. And that's cool because I don't... I'm not doing this part about me loving Steve for you guys. Like, I don't care. Um, if you guys don't think I like Steve anymore, then whatever. Think I don't like Steve anymore. Is if we want to get woke about it, this is a toxic culture. It's Steve. Yeah, and that is true. Like, um, and some of you might say this is where I was a hypocrite because the fact that I cussed was me being toxic. I guess if you are totally triggered by foul language or nasty language, if that really bothers you, then yeah, I guess I can see how you would say, like, I'm being toxic. Um, I would ask why the heck are you watching my channel if um, you don't like that language. That's what really tripped me out when people were going, and that's how I knew that none of these people watch my channel because I drop bombs. I drop bombs, people. Like, that's never, never been an issue. So if you don't like the way I talk, like, you wouldn't watch my channel. So coming here and going, huh, this language, am I right, um, Ruthie? Like, whatever. Like, I always talk like this, okay? So the fact that the, the language is the problem just shows that, like, you've never watched any of my videos. So what I, what I mean to say is, welcome to my channel, and I appreciate the views you're giving me. Oh, but back to Steve. Yes, what Steve does is horribly toxic. Um, Brian at Bookish monetizes the channel and donates that money to charity. Steve called Brian disingenuous and said a lot of very harsh negative things about him in Steve's response video to that. That is not okay. For those of you who like left, this is the best. This is like so funny. When people like on a comment, like they're like, this is not okay. All right, um, sure. Um, what I also noticed was that, um, and this was just me looking through um, the comments, um, the comment storm I got this morning where um, people said a bunch of stuff about how my video is wrong and bad and all this stuff. And then somebody pointed out to them like, well, it's weird because you said that exact same thing to Steve on Steve's video. Uh, you know, like you said, like Steve's video was bad for saying these things. And now someone's calling Steve out on it, just like you called him out in your comments. And now Matt's bad for doing the same thing you did in the comments. So this goes back again to where comments are free speech. Comments are fine to call people out on, but you should not call people out in a video. Which is weird because most of the people who came to my channel today to call me out came because Michael K. Vaughn called me out in his video. Okay, and now this is another thing, and this is really difficult for me to do here because I talked to Steve about what my video was about, and I talked to Steve about the points I was going to make in my video. The things Steve said to me privately pissed me off so much more than the things Steve said in his video. That I wanted to, with everything in me, to make a video playing the clips that Steve sent me on Boxer. Because the things coming out of his mouth were shocking to me. But I know that that is bad. You do not share private conversations on anything. You just don't do that. So this is making it doubly hard for me because a lot of the things that I'm getting in the comments and people are saying, like, I feel like if you knew 
this other stuff, like you probably wouldn't be saying that to me. You wouldn't be saying that stuff to me. See, the thing is, a lot of this video is about monetization, but the arguments that I'm getting from the peanut gallery down below um, are not about monetization. They're about bullying and stuff like that. And what is really happening here, Steve Donahue has been the bully on booktube for years. Okay, he says it with a smile, he says it with a chuckle, he's the bully. I stand up to the bully, okay, and I get in trouble. And this is very typical, and this is exactly how life was in school. This is exactly how it was in high school. Like, the bully would say something, I would say something back, I would get sent to the principal's office, okay? And it was usually because I was bigger and scarier than the bully, okay? So, you know, it is what it is. Like, the people who want to defend Steve are going to defend Steve, all right? That's fine. And it's so funny, because again, when I would defend Steve on videos like this one, and or like the other one and cuss up a storm all of you guys would thank me okay you would leave comments telling me what a great thing i'm doing is but now that i'm doing it against steve and against what steve said you guys have a problem with it because of my language and my tone so i really hope um i really hope that this video um shed some light and I, I hope that you have been able to understand the things I'm saying now, that I'm speaking in a more calm tone without any bombs or anything like that. And now, hopefully now, we can actually have a conversation, okay? Now you guys can tell me, you, you could defend Steve and tell me all the things that Steve is doing that are right. And then you could point out all the things that I'm doing that are bad. Okay, now that there's no language hurting you. So if you um, have anything to say about Steve's video now and my video about Steve's video, if you have anything about monetization you would like to talk about, please leave it down below. If you have any actual like arguments about any of the things I said in my video about Steve's video and Steve, leave it in the comments down below, okay? And you know what, let's be nice. We, we don't want to use foul language. We don't want to say anything that'll like hurt people's sensibilities or anything like that. Um, but if, if there's something you would like to say, please leave it down below. Um, for those of you who are new to my channel, um, I do use bad language most of the time. This video is an anomaly, so be prepared for that. But you know what, since you're here and you're giving me your views and you're giving me the engagement in the comments, why don't you go ahead and like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And you know what, when you push the thumbs down button, YouTube also looks at that as engagement. So go ahead and click that if you really don't like the things I'm saying. That's cool too. I appreciate that. My family appreciates that, okay? So you guys are wonderful. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.